Hi, Nicholas. Uh, this is uh, Kinyup uh, from Kevium. Welcome to the Kevium booth at MWC 2016. Uh, we have a lot of exciting new products and uh, basically a lot of new ARM-based uh, products as well. Uh, the one you see here in the middle is a standard 1U 19-inch uh, server using uh, ARM technology, 64-bit yeah, ARM uh, CPU for, the, uh, for this uh, standard server. Um, it is um, from Cavium uh, ThunderX uh, ARM processor. It supports a lot of different kind of server applications. Uh, for example, uh, you can use it in like, web hosting. Uh, in fact, it's been deployed in uh, run above uh, web hosting, where you can uh, rent cycles um, and um, try different kind of workloads. Uh, so actually, if I want to host my ARM, uh, if I want to host my website ARM devices on the ARM server, yes, I can go there and I Absolutely. can get it hosted there. Absolutely. On an on an Thunder X. Absolutely, that would be very cool. An ARM website on ARM server. And it's part of OVH, right? It's a very big company. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. In, uh, that yes. kind of space. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, and you have a bunch of other partners you can talk about. Yeah. So we actually target many different applications. Um, so server is one. You know, we focus on very optimized workload. So basically, it's not just a general purpose uh, server processor. We optimize it for also networking use cases. For example, network function virtualization. Uh, we also optimize it for a lot of storage applications uh, like Ceph uh, and big data, big data analysis like Hadoop. Um, also, a lot of different Web 2.0 hyperscale data centers use cases. You know, for example, um, you know Nginx doing the web serving. For example, your website could be uh, served by Nginx uh, and managed by OpenStack. So thousands and thousands of these servers and can be managed uh, by OpenStack as well as fully supported. Um, and also a lot of the distro support as well, like uh, Canonical. Uh, Suze, Red Hat, uh, FreeBSD, we have all the support. So there's a lot of uh, platform software support as well, uh, available on ARM 64-bit and on ThunderX uh, server from Cavium. And you have a whole bunch of hardware partners here. There are also here. hardware partners. Uh, for example, um, you know, NVIDIA uh, graphics processor can be used along with our ThunderX ARM server to accelerate a lot of financial applications, financial modeling. So you, you would have an ARM mm -hmm. server yeah. and then and the same uh, data center, it yeah. connects to a bunch of GPUs from NVIDIA. Yeah, absolutely. You can use that as, a, as a, just, you know, like how NVIDIA is accelerating other financial models today um, with other uh, server processors. Um, we also have, um, for example, um, you know, SSDs, uh, 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 like SanDisk uh, partners, where you do a lot of um, storage, you know, for, for big data. Uh, you can get high speed, you know, NVMe based storage. Um, so we are also demonstrating the complete uh, Ceph uh, cluster today, where it is used by many different kind of applications. You know, like in a in a data center where you manage a lot of both structured and unstructured data, uh, whether you use object storage or file storage. Uh, Ceph is running on ARM-based uh, ThunderX as well. Um, so you can use that uh, for for storage, for web hosting scenario, for um, networking. You know, like NFV scenario. Uh, and we can work with OpenStack, where you know a lot of these uh, data data centers and infrastructure are using uh, for managing that their storage. Uh, so, so both storage and compute, you, you know, this ARM-based server uh, can do the very good job and provide a very good total cost of ownership. And for the networking uh, mm -hmm. uh, industry, yeah. where the Mobile World Congress is a lot of telecom, absolutely, and yeah. they will use this. Oh, absolutely, they're testing and, and it right now. Absolutely, this is Mobile World Congress. So um, most important things, mobile. 5G. Um, so a lot of um, new activities there is um, cloud, um, moving, for example, base stations to the cloud, which uh, some people call cloud RAN, some people call centralized RAN. So we actually have three different demos on cloud RAN today uh, here. You know, one is um, a demo where we go through uh, a user trying to download uh, something from his uh, home. You know, in this case, it goes to a complete uh, mobile infrastructure, which is all here. Uh, starting with the user's tablet, you can connect through LTE wireless to a remote radio head, which is the, this reference box uh, designed by Cavium. Um, and over Ethernet, which is a very low cost way to connect to our baseband in our cloud data center, we have, uh, this is actually a development board for, for our Thunder, uh, our ARM server. So this server is actually running the rest of the uh, mobile infrastructure, like the baseband, the mobile core, all of that running on this. So picture this as basically a stack of servers at the uh, data center in the cloud or the edge of the mobile uh, network. Uh, so through this, it completes the mobile infrastructure. 
uh, and then it goes back to uh, uh, IoT Gateway, which is also based on Caribbean um, multi-core processor, uh, Octane Online. It has connection to some sensors uh, and, and cameras, so that information go, flows back all the way back to the um, you know mobile core, the baseband in the cloud uh, data center, which now goes back to the remote radio head, which is at a cell site close to the user, back to wirelessly to LTE to the user pad. You can see the video, so it completes the entire. Uh, mobile infrastructure is running live uh, on ARM-based server. Yeah, this Everything is entire. Everything on ARM, but oh, on MIPS also over there. Right? Well, some mix architecture, but um, yeah. you know they all SOCs. Um, the server is based on ARM. And all right. Thunder X. And what are you yeah. talking about here? So here is another uh, proof of concept that we are working with uh, some service providers like AT&T, Verizon, SK Telecom, um, and in this. This is another way to uh, look at uh, next generation mobile infrastructure, where you see uh, virtualized RAN, cloud RAN, just like we demonstrated here. In addition, we are also doing some distributed uh, EPC, mobile core, uh, so you get a lot more edge services. Uh, and all that could be running on ARM servers as well. So uh, that's keeping a lot of people busy, what's going on right now. And it's, it's really important to use uh, an ARM server for all this to be possible, right? Otherwise, there's too yeah. much power consumption? Absolutely. So, um, you know, uh, with our technology, we integrate a lot of CPU cores. In fact, each one of our processor integrates 48 64 uh, bit ARM CPU cores, plus a lot of other networking acceleration and interfaces. So, it's very high integration. Uh, as a result, you can pack more compute in a much higher density way with our ARM server, um, and it consumes less power, it costs less money, and uh, total cost of ownership is much better. Uh, and also the important thing is that the ecosystem support is there. So the software for running a data center, uh, for managing these machines, are all supporting ARM and ThunderX. So you can get the software ex and same experience, but at a lo much lower TCO. So uh, lower TCO makes it affordable for the consumer at the end to get a yeah. better service. Uh, it's getting faster and faster. It's going to be gigabits per second at some point. Oh, yeah, it's going to be crazy fast. Yeah, and uh, we in cannot fact, just uh, yeah. continue the same way we're doing things yeah. today. It's interesting you mentioned gigabit. I mean, each one of these CPUs includes uh, eight 10 gig interface, and you can use it for 40 gig also, so two 40 gigabit Ethernet as well. So these uh, CPUs are already built, you know, integrating very high speed internet uh, connection. That's uh, t totally awesome, and, uh, and and you have uh, on the slide here, you're showing, uh, so you have all these uh, hardware yeah, partners. Factors. Yeah, exactly. So, interestingly, um, there are different form, yeah. different form factors, um, and, and uh, people use it different ways. You know, for example, um, we, we saw this um, One U server. Uh, we should clo close the uh, box here. Is this a One U? Yeah, this is One U 19. It's, it's basically the standard rack mount server today how many, in the industry. How many, uh, how many SOCs in here? So this one has one, but you can have ones with two CPUs inside. Working in one of those, yeah. yeah. You could have that, yes. Yeah. Um, and then um, it looks like this inside, which is, you know, basically a lot of the space inside is just hard disk and uh, power uh, supply. So. Uh, the board is actually very clean because we integrate everything on one chip, so the board is much cleaner. Uh, as a result, you can actually build a lot more denser kind of uh, server designs. And in fact, there are other designs where uh, you see dense form factors. So, you know, for example, this one you see a uh, four sled, and each one can have two CPUs in there. So each CPU is 48 cores. You get a lot of the like, thousands of cores in in this uh, one chassis. Um, and then we have also OCP, Open Compute. Uh, platform designs. Um, so these designs are actually made by our OEM and ODM uh, partners. Uh, these guys? Yeah, some of these guys. You know, for example, we see Gigabyte, uh, which is um, a major ODM for servers. Uh, Asus, uh, Widewin. These are all major server design uh, ODMs. Um, Pegatron. Pegatron. Uh, you see also like Penguin and Stack Velocity. They focus a lot on storage uh, type of platforms. So there are also form factors where uh, similar to this, but we pack a lot more hard disks. So as a result, um, the total cost of ownership again is, is much lower because um, you know directly all these hard disks up to 16 can be connected to one CPU. I can imagine all yeah. these uh, hardware looks awesome. It's too bad you didn't bring more of the different uh, crazy server designs. There's right. A lot yeah. Of different uh, variability. We only carry one here. Yeah. But There's we a, have lot a lot of designs happening right now. A lot. Yeah. So a lot of uh, different use cases, as I mentioned, um, and then each use case could have different form factors. Uh, there's a lot of new innovation in server design. So basically, the industry trend is that um, servers are very different nowadays. So historically, servers are very general purpose. Uh, but nowadays, uh, you have a lot of Web 2.0 companies, they focus on one application. 
they demand all kinds of optimization, acceleration, because they only need to run one application. So instead of just general purpose, they want uh, workload optimized. Uh, and we provide a lot of relevant hardware acceleration for that and uh, integration of I.O. for that. Um, so there are also different form factors to squeeze out more costs, uh, make it lower power, make it higher density. I could imagine if somebody uh, was a uh, 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 designer of servers five years ago and they slept for five years and they wake yeah. up now, it's a right. totally different world, right? It's very different. It's, it's very, very different, different what's going Absolutely. on. Before yeah. it was just uh, boring, yeah. Intel-only yeah. stuff and nothing yeah. so customized, yeah. right? Yeah, we provide alternatives. And you provide, uh, like, uh, you can yeah. have them uh, run around in circles and yeah. trying to imagine the future and how to best design the yeah. PCB and how yeah. to best uh, use Absolutely. your... Absolutely. I think the future is that there's a much bigger ecosystem and that's happening, you know, in terms of um, hyperscale data center, web 2.0 companies. Uh, nowadays, also service providers. They want a much bigger ecosystem. They want alternatives. So we're providing uh, ARM-based alternatives uh, with, you know, better performance and, um, and better total cost. I hope you can have some very big... Uh, 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 Cloud company guys uh, happy to announce that they have huge data centers with, with your. Yeah, absolutely. This we could happen. That. Yeah, absolutely. That's up to them, right? Absolutely. So hopefully yeah. they'll announce it very soon. Yeah. That there will be uh, yeah, there, millions there was, of them. Yeah, uh, there was an announcement of a, a web-based, uh, uh, you know, a web hosting company, uh, One Above, which is subsidiary of OVH. So there was announced last year. Uh, also, you know, this ARM servers are also very popular with high-performance computing. Um, you know, about one or two, two years ago, Cray Computer actually announced that they will use this processor, uh, Thunder X ARM processor, on their high-performance high compute. So we are building supercomputers based on our ARM. Um, so Cray, as well. Cray is a supercomputing... Yeah, Cray is a supercomputing uh, company. They build supercomputers. Um, That's cool. And uh, Acer is doing a bunch of servers, yes. and then MyTac. Yeah, so these are all ODM, so... Um, and there's more? There's even more than that, right? Yeah, there's even more than that. We're just showing, uh, you know, some examples here. There wasn't know. more enough space on the slide. You right. have more. You have more <laughs> partners. Yeah, we do have more partners. Absolutely, right. we're more partners and customers. So it's going to be a busy year this year. Absolutely, Ab absolutely. And this is in production. So this is in uh, mass production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and there's several of these designs in production. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and from as you see, uh, some examples of ODMs. There are more that we have not shown here. And OEMs also.